Do you need a custom conveyor? Do you need it quick? If so, robot units might be the solution for you. My name is Eric Keller. I'm E&M's Robot Units Product Specialist based here at Pacific Northwest. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to spec a conveyor from robot units. The request form that we're gonna look at today is the basis for all of your conveyor needs. So what is robot units, you might be asking? Robot Units is a company that sells aluminum extrusion and extrusion-based products. They developed an aluminum extrusion profile and they've used it to create all their products, including these conveyors. The request form we're gonna look at today allows you to specify and design a custom conveyor to fit your needs. We'll go through all the specifics and in the request form, we'll make it nice and easy for you to fill out. So with that, let's jump right in. All right, here at my desktop, I have the robot units request form for bulk conveyors pulled up. What we'll do is we'll walk through this together. I'll highlight any tips and tricks along the way, but we'll show you how to fill it out. So first up, this customer information. This is where you're going to put your name, your telephone, your email address, so we know how to get in touch with you. Next, we start getting into the nitty gritty of the conveyor. So first off, we want to know how many pieces you're looking for, how many conveyors. This is how many conveyors of this particular design you need. Next is going to be the frame width, and the frame width is going to be how wide of a frame you need, which includes the belt. Next is the total length. This is going to be from one end to the other of the conveyor, as you can see here. Luckily, Robot Units has kind of provided you with somewhat of a guide when it comes to things like height, width, and uh, depth. Next, you'll need to figure out is this a constant speed conveyor, or does it need to adjust, be adjustable? You'll want to put those values in, how fast in meters per minute you need the conveyor to move or what the range of speeds are. Next, you're going to choose whether this needs to have a speed controller or not, if you're going to provide that yourself. What the total load on the conveyor is, this is the total load of all of your parts that will be present on the conveyor at any given time, not just one part. So if you're running only one part at a time on the conveyor, just put the total weight of that one part or if you plan on having multiple items on the conveyor at a single time, put the combined weight. Next are the side guides. These are a little tricky. These are not the side guides that are the uh, plastic adjustable versions that you'll see under the accessories. This is the stainless steel side guide that sticks up on the side of the conveyor. This can be used as somewhat of a product guide, but it's not really intended for that. This is mostly keeping the belt tracked in the middle um, and so I highly recommend to use the plastic side guides. So what you do is you'll go ahead and put that value of those heights. Standard is usually around five to 10 millimeters uh, and go ahead and put those in there. Next, you'll put in some of the temperature considerations, you know, how hot is your part that you're putting on a conveyor, uh, what the ambient temperature in the, in the environment around the conveyor is. So the next section is the drive and idler section. This is where we talk about uh, how we're gonna power the conveyor and how we are going to uh, have the ends mounted as well. So first off is voltage. Here in the US, uh, 220 volt is your standard or 400 volt if necessary. If you have a special voltage and that needs to be taken into account, go ahead and click that special voltage tab and put your value in there. Next is gonna be your cycle time. Uh, for your product run, so how long it's going to run, the runtime, and how many cycles per minute you're looking at. Is this an accumulation conveyor? Yes or no? Uh, and then the next one, which is important, is the direction of travel. Are we going to be pulling the belt with the motor in front of the part, or are we going to be pushing it with the motor at the back of the part, or is this going to be a potentially a reversing conveyor as well? The drive type is going to be really critical because this defines where the motor and the gearbox are placed. As you can see, Robot Units has given you letters from A all the way to Q of different orientations and nose bar combinations that you might need. You can see options A and B have the motor and gearbox on one side, either at one end of the conveyor. Options C and D have the motor on one side of the conveyor with a nose bar, a thin nose bar on the opposite side. E and F are options for having the motor and gearbox stick out perpendicular to the conveyor. G and H are perpendicular motor and gearbox with a nose bar at the end. Q 
K is a middle mounted idler setup. L is a middle mounted uh, idler setup with a nose bar on one end. N is a nose bar on the opposite end. And Q is a middle mounted motor gearbox with nose bars on both ends. So now we'll put a little bit of a description here on what the goods being transported are. This is basically what is your part? Is it a brake rotor? Is it a bottle of water? Whatever that is, go ahead and put a brief description here in this box. Next up is belt properties. As you can see, this is what the belt will be made out of. Typical standard black belt is a cut resistant belt. We also offer food safe belts uh, and electrically conductive and UV resistant as well. If you have a specific request, it is possible. Just click other and put the type of belt that you need for your application. So moving along, the next thing we need to look at is how our motor is positioned relative to the plane of the conveyor. You have several options. Again, Robot Units provides you with a nice, concise picture of how the motor is to be mounted. So pick your motor mounting. Typically, on average, normally zero degrees or 90 degrees is what we would go with. Next to the terminal box position, this is the wiring junction box, as it were, on top of the motor. Typically, 270 degrees is used in this uh, application just because it's a nice, convenient place to put the conveyor or the terminal box mounted below the motor. You'll add if you need some thermal sensors and contacts, yes or no. And then finally, we need to look at the support frame. So Robot Units does not offer the conveyor with a frame by default. This is a option that you choose. Uh, I would highly suggest using a frame as the frame comes from robot units pre-made for the conveyor. All you have to do is put it together and put the conveyor in your factory floor where you need it. So when it comes to the frame, you have a few options. First, do you want it supplied assembled or loose? Well, for Okay, so then we have the support frame. At this point, you need to decide whether you're going to have a frame or not. If you want a frame, you can either have it assembled, so it comes on a large pallet, fully assembled with the conveyor. All you have to do is move the conveyor to where you need it and it's off and running. Or if you want it supplied loose to where you'll have to bolt it to the frame or to the frame of the conveyor and then put the conveyor to use. Or no, meaning you don't want a frame. Next, you need to determine the height, the start height and the end height. So if this is an incline conveyor, your start and end heights will be different. But if this is a flat horizontal conveyor, your start and end heights will be equal and they will be the height off the ground that you would like your conveyor to be. Next is the total length. As you can see from the picture here is the total length of the conveyor, including potential nose bars if you're using them. And this is the overall length that you need your conveyor to span. If you don't know your start and end heights, you can put an incline angle if necessary to, and that will be figured out for you in the design of the conveyor. And lastly, what foot type? If you want this to be a permanently mounted or stationary conveyor, you would use the S for the small adjustable foot pad, or H if you wanted a roller caster with a brake. If this is going to be a mobile application, I highly recommend the casters with a brake. And last, if you have a sketch, or any in additional information you'd like to provide about the conveyor you're looking for, there's a form for that. And with that, I wanna say thank you so much. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me or your local robot units product specialist, and we'd be happy to set up a time to go through the forum with you. Thanks, have a great day.